Hey everybody, it's March the 14th, 2020. This is actually our first day of social distancing uh, during this lovely coronavirus crisis. And I actually needed to cook a brisket for um, a friend who bought this on a silent auction for our church. And so I thought I would do a quick reveal video. So uh, we end up wrapping our briskets in old rags. Um, better watch because if I'm not careful, somebody who is four-legged down here may want to partake of that brisket. So uh, I've actually, I, I'm not doing a whole video today. I'm just doing the reveal to kind of see how, how it turned out. But um, I have a small $100 smoker and I'll include in the description a link to a full video about the ways that I use that $100 propane smoker to cook. But it basically cooks the bottom one a lot faster. So total cook time on the bottom was about four and a half hours. And the top one, uh, total cook time was about uh, eight and a half hours. So quite a bit longer. And so we're kind of cut in here to the um, top one first. You can see that the, um, the bottom of this got quite a bit more charred um, on the bottom. And I end up flipping it after I, at 165, I end up uh, pulling this off and um, letting it rest. Well, no, sorry. We wrap at 165, we pull off at 205. And so this, this one tends to be the, the one that's on the bottom a little bit on the drier side. Uh, not quite as moist, but I, uh, this is Texas style brisket. So this is, I use uh, some regular yellow mustard as a bonding agent and then just, uh, you know, sprinkle with, um, with salt and pepper, and then um, I, I use an injected marinade. And I was talking to my friend Steve on Facebook today, who hasn't he hasn't done a marinade before. And I guess I just saw somebody, you know, when I was starting to learn to make brisket, actually this basically this summer, um, I, I saw somebody talk about you know using a marinade, and so I've just always used a marinade. And I don't know, you know, how it turns out if I don't use one, because because I always have. Um, if you like some, or if people that you're serving the brisket to enjoy, you know, some burnt ends and enjoy it a little bit crispier, uh, I guess that's actually maybe an advantage here because this bottom brisket ends up having, you know, a little bit, a little bit crispier uh, portion, especially there on the bottom. When I was st started doing this, I would end up flipping these. And, and so I would take uh, the top one after a while and I would move it down to the bottom, but I don't do that anymore. I just leave them and so anyway I end up with this brisket that like I said cooks a little bit faster um, but you can see hey we got this great smoke ring that looks really I mean that looks awesome this is gonna be fantastic uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead I'm actually I'm actually delivering this to somebody and I've got a foil tray that I'm gonna be delivering it on but I'm gonna just put it here for starters are you sure you think that a sample a little bit of it first Yes. I think we probably should. So, this looks pretty good. This will be a little sample piece. So, we'll cut that off. See how the bottom one was. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll have a little bit more of that one in just a minute. Okay, so now we got the best one. And so, this one, four o'clock. This one actually just came off. Um, an hour and eight minutes ago. So this one smoked for eight and a half hours. It's hard to know the exact, because I don't have a, a, I don't use a probe to do my ambient temperature. I, I, and you shouldn't really, what you need to do is rely on the internal temperature probes, and I do. But I think that my, my top rack ends up smoking at a little bit over 200, you know, maybe 215. I think the bottom actually gets quite a bit hotter. I think it cooks more like 300. So this is one that smoked eight and a half hours, rested for one hour. We took it out at 165. We wrapped it in the butcher paper at 165. And this one typically is the juicier and better of the two briskets. So you can still see that on the bottom side, okay, look at the dogs here. They are pretty excited. Bottom of the brisket here again, a little bit on the, on the crispier side. I do flip it. And so when I'm cooking um, after what's called the stall, what happens at uh, 
165, I, I end up flipping it, and so it, it, it cooks with that. This, this end was up for the, the last half. All right, so here is the big reveal for the best, probably. You know what? It looks really, really comparable. It looks really, really comparable to the, to the bottom one. I don't know if it's going to be visually distinguishable at all. So great smoke ring there. Um, I try when I <clears throat> when I trim my brisket um, to this is this is basically a forty dollar brisket from Walmart, um, and it was I don't know it's about I think it's about eight pounds. Um, I end up trying to leave about a quarter inch of fat on it, and sometimes I've trimmed them a little bit more on the on the um, the lean side. So anyway, I don't know that one. That one looked a little bit thicker. Let's uh, we'll use this little piece and do a little taste test to see how it is. Mm. Now it's going to be hard to give this thing away, but I think I can do it. So check out the show notes if you or not the show notes. Check out the description if you want to see a further like 17 minute long video of the steps I use to do this and give it a shot. Cooking brisket is a wonderful, awesome thing to do. And your family, as well as if you have any dogs, get really excited when you do it. See you later.